So recently I stumbled across some yellow tape while walking around in my neighborhood. And oh yeah, I'm having some minced tea with stevia and almond milk. Very delicious. So yeah, I stumbled across some yellow tape and there were... I saw some police cars and a police car that said forensic or something. Forensic investigators. And I thought there was a murder here. I'm not surprised because I'm always hearing screaming outside my doorstep or outside my window. And I hear police wailings, sirens all the time. Uh, a little bit later, I think it was either later that day or the next day. No, it was the next day. I saw the reporter from Global News just standing there in the bus shelter and they were shooting a, a video. And then the next day I went on Global News and I found out that it wasn't a murder, it was a rape case. So uh, apparently a woman had gone out on into the bus shelter at 5.30 in the morning, I guess she was commuting to work very early in the morning. And a man grabbed her, threw her cell phone onto the field, dragged her onto the field and raped her. I was told that York University, the area which I'm living in, is notorious for rape. This is why I don't go out when it's dark. <laughs> and generally why I'm scared to go out around this neighborhood. But it's okay, I'm kind of badass myself. If anyone tries to do anything, I'm gonna just like whoop their ass. Apparently I'm the world's most wanted criminal. When I was at work, uh, I, I kept on being told that all of security of the building knows about me and my bad behavior and that they're watching me. The uh, manager would like call me over into the room and close the door to have a talk with me. And she would tell me that I'm very aggressive, that I don't smile. And the girl next to her had this like resting bitch face and she's like you should smile like everyone else kind of thing and I'm like should I take an example from her and then she like tried to put on a fake smile like, <laughs> I was being cornered for being a criminal and I have the right to suspect that the people that were threatening me of being criminals were doing drugs at work because the way they were acting was highly suspicious and then, yeah, when I went down to security once after my probation, they didn't expect me to come back to work, but I needed the money. So they kind of, how do you say it, they suspended me from work, and I came back after the suspension. And the security headquarters were nicer to me than they were, and they told me that the company, the, the uh, managers were the ones breaking security protocol, actually. Actually, they told me that not only does security know everything about me, but everyone in the building has been informed about me and my criminality. And I was still kind of unsure, like, what did I, exactly did I do so wrong? Like, anyway, I asked one of the other workers, not from my company, but from the same building, if he knows about all the bad things that I did. And he told me, no, he doesn't. He doesn't know. So, I guess those were just empty threats. But, it's not the first time someone's actually called the police on me, or threatened to call the police on me, or threatened to call security on me. Not so long ago, my parents called the police on me twice. And they were complaining, my mom was crying on the phone, that, oh, she's so bad, she's threatening me. When I was younger, um, my mom used to threaten to call the orphanage. Then when I turned it into a teenager, then she started to threaten to call police on me. I remember I was at an airport once, I think I was seven years old, and I was throwing I was throwing colorful balls into the air and just like throwing them around. And I think I thrown them onto a door where a worker was coming, but not so hard, just like playfully. And they asked me to get out of the play zone. And they put me into this like 
solitary confinement room with like a television playing princess movies and I was just sitting there in this dark room it was solitary confinement there there I was the seven-year-old criminal the amount of times I got dragged into detention are uncountable I think I spent most of my recesses in detention and people would just tattle on me I would also get into detention for going to the bathroom during recess because, okay, in my school, you had to be outside all the time during recess, even when it was freezing cold. And in order to go to the bathroom, you needed to get past the door security, which was also like a little kid, grab a hall pass and go to the bathroom. So this one time I went to the bathroom and I was spending a little bit longer time there than usual. And this girl just followed me into the bathroom after like three minutes and told me you're taking too long and I'm like really I mean I just needed I was in the bathroom stall and she literally just walked in and tried to like I think she even tried to get into the stall and she was like you're taking too long and I got into detention for that uh, but sometimes I would just kind of, you know, hang out. I try to avoid the hall pass monitors and just kind of hang out because it was warm inside. And winters were very cold sometimes. Even when I layered up, I would have like multiple pants on, multiple sweaters. It would still be cold. And I would get into detention for, for that as well. Uh, I remember there was a nice playground that I used to really like to play, but it was for grade threes and under. So grade 1 to grade 3 were allowed on the playground, but I really liked the monkey bars. So I went on the monkey bars anyway, and this woman who was just like uh, working there, not even as a school teacher, but as a monitor or whatever, uh, a mom of some girl, told me to get off, get off the playground. And I said no, because I want to, you know, it's not so crowded here, and I would like to use the monkey bars. So she told on me and said that detention is coming for you and you wouldn't believe what she did. So this woman was actually an immigrant lady, first of all. Um, I think she was like a Muslim woman. She, she was wearing a hijab. And she told my friends that she saw me hanging out with who, you know, I, I rarely had friends. I would have the occasional friend. She told my friends th that uh, don't play with this girl, she's very bad, she's very bad. And then I was in detention and I would just sit in the chair in detention. And all the teachers would be gossiping about me, they would be saying how this girl is so bad, I see a bad future for her, she should be disciplined. I just don't understand. I think I'm the world's biggest criminal. having fun on the monkey bars, I'm the world's biggest criminal. Then I remember for certain detentions I had to go around picking garbage and the teacher, I remember she was this Italian teacher, she would be extremely rude to me, extremely rude. And I remember in grade one, I asked the teacher if I could go to the bathroom, it was this, I think she was Irish, she had brown, short hair. I'm not going to point names out because I don't want to be a tattle. But uh, yeah, I asked her, can I go to the bathroom? She said, absolutely. And so I went and I came back and she said, you weren't allowed to go to the bathroom and told me that I have detention. It was like my entire middle school was just one big long detention. It was either that or just walking around on the field by myself. And whenever I got engaged with friends, friends, I would get picked. So, you know how little kids like to brag to each other? Everyone would brag and I would brag too. And whenever I had a chance to brag, um, I would get picked, like in a very subtle but overt way. Let's just put it this way. Like, if I were to say something good about myself and be like, well, I'm this and that, people would be like, you know when you smile, your cheeks are so big. They're so fat. And when you smile, you know your teeth are so small, your gums show. It's so ugly. So I, <clears throat> I immigrated to Canada when I 
was I think I was seven or six turning seven. And those were my experiences as a child growing up in Toronto or the GTA area. So couldn't really be friends with any of the ethnic minorities or ethnic majorities because I didn't really, people would ask me, are you from Pakistan, are you from China, like I, I couldn't be friends with anyone because I was nor Christian nor Jewish because of that <clears throat> I think that's where a lot of my hardships came from. And nowadays, whenever I see a person from my country who looks kind of Asian and uh, talks on the cell phone or with, with each other in Russian, I just avoid them. I don't think they're cool at all. I don't find people from my country to be particularly cool. I'd rather hang out with Canadian Canadians because they're definitely very fun to hang out with and they generally know you know how Canada works there's like this whole new age phenomenon you know of like being a ditz like the whole new thing is you gotta be a ditz because that's the new spiritual thing it's kind of hard to be a ditz when your body is in pain I find uh, thinking takes the pain off of physical pain so if you have like let's say a backache one day, a stomach ache, or a backache one hour, then your stomach hurts, then your knees are killing you, or you have a headache and your ears are hurting, or you know you have a sore nose, the inside of your nose is hurting and and your ears are hurting. It's kind of hard, you know. You gotta be a healthy, a healthy person, like on the, I, I want to say like on the outside. Your body, your your hardware has to be healthy. So for this painting, I actually made a stencil design from a sketch, and I'm trying to get the right uh, shape for this oval here based on the angle of the people. And I think that I should actually make this a little narrower. So the way I'm planning to do this painting is I'm going to stencil my characters in. Stencil is like graffiti paper, like you can color over it and print a picture onto your canvas. So I drew a sketch first in my sketchbook, then I scanned it and then I printed it out to the right size so that I could trace it with my projector and I projected it against the bathroom wall because it was dark in the bathroom. And then. I glued some stencil paper over that projection and it had to be the right sharpness, the right magnitude and then I traced it with a sharpie marker and then I cut it out and that's how I'm going to work. I'm going to stencil my characters onto my canvas. So here, I'm cooking sardines with vegetables. I cut up some onions, some celery, and some spinach. Then I used olive oil and Himalayan pink salt.
kind of like fried the vegetables for some time and added some lemon juice. the sardines and I just kind of let them almost just like heat up not really cook them because they're already cooked I ate the sardines the cooked sardines with some Korean carrot salad and it was very delicious bon appetit